Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy, with another special guest on the Gratitude Podcast interview. And as I think about these special guests, I think, well, how did I meet these people? How did I know this young man who's half my age, but he's got twice the intelligence? So he's a tremendous guy. And I met him, gosh, maybe a dozen or so years ago. It's already gone by fast, maybe longer than that. But Stuart Butler. So, Stuart, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, David. You bet. You bet. So what I'm doing on this is I'm just trying to get people, people that have had a lot on the ball, certainly you're one of those people, just that maybe there's going to be a few comments or things that might help somebody. So first question for you is, what has been, this we're seven, eight weeks into this, what has been your best coping mechanism to help you through this madness, whether it be personally or professionally, your business, or what, what's helped you to kind of get through this now that we're a couple months into this? Um. You know, that uh, we were just talking about, uh, you know, the first, um, I think the first couple of weeks, I really had a challenge and just kind of, I think we were busy just kind of uh, doing the necessary things we had to do um, with the business, kind of having to shut down and protect ourselves, and then went into a little bit of, a, um, okay, now what? And you're not going to believe this, you're not going to believe this, but... This right here. Fantastic. <laughs> You're not going to, uh, this is not set up, but I actually pulled out your journal. You gave this to me the last time we met. Yeah. And I've been working on my, um, on my gratitude. So I, 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 I do my daily gratitude. The second thing I've been, that's been really um, successful for me is this, my, this is my journal. I got this one. This is living your best year ever um, by Darren Hardy. Oh, and yeah. I do, um, and I've used multiple journals. I've used the best self journal. I've used, um, um, I can't think of the other one I was using, which, um, but this one has a rhythm uh, section in it. And it actually, um, it helps me. It's, it's really kind of funny, but uh, when I started using this and really going through the planning process, looking at my goals and trying to figure my way out of this, because I have to now I have to figure out how to, how do, how do we shift our business? How do we, you know, so I've started really working on myself, getting back to working on myself, getting working on my exercise and my health. And uh, and really kind of one of the things that I've always tried to be is I've always tried to um, be a better version of myself. And this time has given me that, uh, this uh, time has given me that time to work on that. And I've always been, um, I would say organization has been a, it's been a, um, um, just being personally organized to get the things, my finances and those things. I've never really had that time because I've been pushing, pushing, pushing. So now I'm like, hey, look, I have the time. And so I've been really working on those elements of, you know, um, every day working on, um, you know, my list of things, getting up early, uh, exercising, um, doing a project on the house and, um, you know, getting my, um, you know, just working through all those tasks and, it's funny, I've been on this journal now for, this is my sixth week in this journal. Oh, nice. And when I started that journal, I was kind of haphazard about like, oh, okay, boy, I'm missing a lot on my check marks. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, okay, I can improve here. I could see all the improvements that I needed to make. Right. And as I'm moving forward, I'm, I'm now, I could just, in six weeks into it, I'm like, it is so rewarding to be able to make those little tiny check marks off, right? That is great. Um, and so that's been really helpful for me. And it's, I've, no, I've noticed that I'm far more productive and I'm, you know, moving into where I want to be. And, um, and I think with that, uh, particularly with my exercise and running, um, that's where a lot of my creativity time comes in. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of times it's just the basics, the basics uh, that uh, have helped me um, stay, stay <laughs> mentally. And I was thinking, as you were saying, and you mentioned the gratitude journal, and, and do you notice what you're grateful for? Has it changed what you're grateful for, say, today versus, say, eight or nine weeks ago before this started? Has it been kind of the same? Has your, your, what you're grateful for shifted at all? Um, I, you know, it's interesting. I was on a, um, you, what, I was noticing about this about your journal is that it actually, um, in a lot of the different journals I've used, Mm -hmm. They have just a line or two, like I get a write like one or two um, bullet points, maybe what I'm grateful for. Right. Yours actually allows me the space to um, expand a little bit. And yeah. so I think that has helped me. In fact, uh, I was on a run the other day 
And it's, uh, it's funny as you, you know, I spend uh, a couple of minutes about writing what I'm grateful for today, which a lot of times it's the same things. Yeah. But oh, yeah. A lot of times, you know, it's, I, you, I go, well, why am I, I'm, I'm asking myself, why am I grateful for that? What's allowed me to be grateful for that? I was on a run the other day and I was, uh, I was just, I'm grateful that um, I was just thinking about my parents and how grateful I was that um, it's funny, but we grew up kind of poor. Mm -hmm. didn't know it too much but my parents never you know it was just uh we got to do what we want I got to play hockey and I was like well I mean my dad worked three jobs and to provide for us like he did I go but what they provided was safety yeah right a secure and and uh we never knew you know never you know we're always fed well um we just always had a safe environment to be home loved you know and just um We'd always go to church on Sundays, and this was consistent. There was consistency, safety, mm. and I just thought, it's like, you know, I go, I know what a sacrifice my parents to provide that environment was, and I was just, uh, um, and I was running, and I was just like, I felt myself, it was funny, because all of a sudden, my energy level was, um, was incredible. Wow. I, was just, I was running hard. Wow. And I was just, I was, I was enjoying the moment of that, uh, you know, that gratitude. And I got home and I was just like, wow, first thing I got to do is I pick up the phone, call my mom. Oh, nice. So it was, that was actually, you know, so. What an endorsement for, what an endorsement for gratitude. And all of a sudden your energy level went in even, even higher and so forth. So, but I, so I, if I think about Stuart Butler and the things that you do and the amount of, uh, even from when I met you to what you and your brother are doing now and so forth, a lot of things going on, a lot of balls in there, a lot of different things that you both do and you do. And I think about some of the things where you've gone on these challenges where you lost weight and got yourself in great shape and so forth. But any thoughts or tips or ideas maybe for somebody who's stuck in their house or condo or maybe things they can be doing? You mentioned about getting caught up in some things, which is a great point too. But any other ideas for people that are maybe housebound about what they can be doing during this time of being kind of shut in? Well, I've been home for seven weeks. I've been out, honestly, I've been out twice to, co you know, to Costco for uh, a short trip. The, most of the time I'm in house, I think it's just, you know, um, digging deeper into mm -hmm. what, what it is that you want to do. It's like, you know, I, I was reading about somebody who was organizing um, their clutter the other day rather than organizing their life. They were just organizing their stuff versus diving in deeper to uh, really um, go farther and organize them themselves and getting rid of stuff, right, and simplifying. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a, that's one of the things that I've worked on is, is to try and simplify nice. and allow that space. And I, I find that when I'm able to do that, I'm clearing, I'm clearing more room in my head and in my nice. life, right? Nice. And so I think that even if you're, you're at home, you're just like looking to go um, deeper in the things that you're doing in your daily life and not, you know, what is that breaking that routine go and, and breaking that simple routine down and asking that question, well, what if I did this a little deeper and go, and I think uh, one of the things that I'm working on right now is capacity, mm. the ability, you know, I, I was, uh, it was, uh, um, there's a book, Elevate, talks, he's talking about, I watched a podcast or, or a, um, a webinar, he's talking about uh, um, the, the ability, the capacity, expanding your capacity, and I, I find that you know, running does that, exercising does that, I'm expanding my capacity. And I think sometimes even that deep work or, you know, you have to work at it, you have to go um, to be able to expand that capacity to do more. Right, exactly. And I think that, you know, even with me around the house and, you know, um, doing some gardening and, uh, or the capacity for me to feel, fit more in my day and be more focused mm -hmm. so that uh, I can uh, fit everything I want to do into four, four or four and a half days of work and take two and a half days off or make sure I'm out of the office at five and say, you know, I'm home uh, and uh, spend my time with my wife and say, I'm committed to um, right. Right. our family at that time. That's, and that's, that's really valuable. So uh, very, very good point. Just a couple more questions. 
anything that you're thinking about now that when this is over now, whether it's a vaccine or where they go back in phases or whatever it might be, but when this is kind of behind this, is there anything you're thinking about now that has crossed your mind in these last six, seven, eight weeks that's like, man, I'm going to hit the ground running with this. When this is done, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. Anything like that that's crossed your mind for when we're, uh, when this is sort of behind us? Actually, what I would love to do is continue the style of what I'm doing now mm. and creating that space and that, um, 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 that I can get my work done mm. in a limited amount of time. I can, I can communicate with my team, uh, have my team, you know, or, um, do what we need to do, be focused, communicate, and, um, uh, allow my team to grow, but to try to develop that, um, um, to continue this, the efforts that I'm making now and that, and not to go back to my old habits, Yeah, right? uh, or, you know, working 60 hours a week. Um, oh, that's it. That's it. Right. You know, it's like cut back and say, you know what, I can accomplish more in less time than being more focused and, and put the time into the other things that I'm interested in. Well, what a great uh, kind of a safety valve or a check to, instead of working 60 hours. And although I must say, every time I drive down some road and I, I see an A board that's coming up on the sidewalk and it says Butler Valet, I go like, is there any other one? Is there anybody? Is there anybody else in the business? I mean, excuse me, of course it's Butler Valet. So anyway, but I'm glad to hear you're not going to crack up in the meantime, especially doing 60 hours. So, so last question, Stuart, is that if you think back, is there something that's kind of a I don't know, maybe a mantra or a quote or a life philosophy or something that you kind of utilize, whether it's to get through something type, something like this, or just in general, uh, I've had people say, well, this too shall pass is kind of their mantra. Is there anything that you kind of use as something that kind of sustains you? So I've been, um, I've been um, stoicism. I know that you probably know a little bit about stoicism. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I've been, um, kind of Ryan uh, Holiday, um, The Obstacles Away. I've been, you know, uh, subscribing to a lot of his uh, um, daily um, readings. And so, Excellent. you know, I think that helps me also this, um, we're here, and I wish I could remember the, um, uh, the sayings that were on, but you know, we're only here for a short time. And sure. uh, it's all, you know, what's, the, you know, We're, we're all going to die, right? And you yeah. could die any day, right? And so, you, you know, it's uh, not to take things too seriously. Um, and so just keeping things, you know, understanding the perspective of things. And then also, I think, uh, understanding that the challenge is the way, you know, understanding you, you have to go through the challenge and not going, through, not going around it. True. Uh, one of the things I'm working on is I, I need to work on my communication skills. I'm so that's what I need to work on. And I'm like, okay. So I'm going to dive into that, but, um, Excellent. but, uh, you know, I just think that, uh, a lot of information out there that, uh, that I'm consuming, that I'm have the opportunity to consume that's moving me in the direction. I tell you, there's uh, one of the challenges I have is always getting up on time. Oh, okay. Right. And there's a, uh, uh, what's her name? Um, five, four, three, two, one, you know who I'm talking about? Oh, that's sort of. Is it getting up at five in the morning or that kind of? Was yeah, it no, it's morning? about it's about it's about procrastination and it's about doing something and not waiting, right? Because it's action, it's no. movement. It's when you start, you know. It's when I go running. I hit, by the way, runners don't like to run. Most runners don't like to run. I know it's funny. You put your clothes on. The hardest part is actually getting out the door. Exactly. Right. Starting. It's the hardest part is starting. But once you start, and then you know you got your music on and you're it's yep, you're happy you're doing it. You're happy you're doing. It. So starting is the hardest part and um, counting backwards and um, five, four, three, two, one, and then making, you know, you have to move by one and, and making that action. So uh, I've been working on that and, uh, you know, journaling, part of my journal is uh, prepping tomorrow, today, you know, oh, so I write excellent. out what I'm going to do. I write out every day what my schedule is, what I'm going to do. First thing. Excellent. Waking up, I weigh myself get my drink you know and uh but when i do when i wake up it's five four three two one yeah. I've got to, you know i've got to prep my mind you know and um so there's just those are the few things that i'm working on trying to better the habits it's all habits right yep exactly it's all habits and so yep i'm yep. working on habit stacking and and uh just 
you know, reinforcing my habits and, and soon, you know, hopefully that uh, um, I don't have to think about those things, but uh, then I'm able to build that capacity to go do more. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, that's, so that's, those are the things I, I, I'm working on that uh, and they fuel me, you know, and it's, and it's frustrating. You, you're not perfect every day and I fail every day, all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, Wow, I sure wish I, you know, I'm like, wow, I didn't get a check mark that. Okay, well, tomorrow's a better day, right? I get to work on that tomorrow and I get to hopefully get to put 10 check marks in my, my book tomorrow instead of eight. But that's how we learn too. And, and I always say too, you truly cannot appreciate up until you've seen down. So you got to have those days to make you appreciate the up one. So, but listen, Stuart, thank you so much for being part of the podcast. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you for your friendship. You bet.